at the end of the differentiability part two video, I'd mentioned that continuity is a requirement for differentiability. In other words, if you know a function is differentiable at a point, then you know it is also continuous at that point. Another way of saying this is differentiability implies continuity. So these double arrows just mean is logically equivalent to. So differentiability, differentiability implies continuity. And this is probably the statement that you'll see in your calculus textbooks. And this is exactly the statement that we want to prove in this video. Now, taking back to the title of the video, I, I'd said the title was a proof that continuity is necessary for differentiability. Just understand that that is logically equivalent to differentiability implies continuity. Because these Continuity is necessary for differentiability. Continuity is a requirement for differentiability. If you know a function is differentiable at a point, then you know it's continuous at that point. And differentiability implies continuity. These statements are all logically equivalent to one another. So to beat the dead horse, we want to prove that if a function is, con is differentiable at a point, then it is continuous at that point. In particular, we want to we want to be able to start with the assumption that f of x is differentiable I should say is differentiable at x equals a and do some work and ultimately end up with The fact that f of x is continuous at x equals a. So, so we want to end up with a continuity at a statement. So f of x is continuous at x equals a. This is identical to saying the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals f of a. So I have, just have a vertical equal sign saying that these two statements, f of x is continuous at a, the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals f of a are equivalent. And how can we quantify this differentiability statement? We can say that f prime of x defined as the limit as x, or f prime of a defined as the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a a over x minus a exists and this should this should just be f of x not f prime of x so let me erase that. So again we've converted f of x is differentiable at x equals a into its quantitative statement f prime of a equals the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a exists so we want to prove this statement here. This is what we want to prove. And we want to make use of this statement here in that proof. So we're going to begin with an expression for the limit as x approaches a of f of x, the left side, and hopefully be able to turn that into the right side. So doing some manipulation showing that these two are actually equal. So the first thing we're, we're going to do is we're actually going to add and subtract f of a from f of x. We're going to subtract first and then add. And realize that here we're just, we're just effectively adding 0 to f of x. Because we're adding and subtracting the same thing even though we're subtracting first. It really doesn't matter. We're not really changing the expression. Now this next step that I made hinges on the fact that this next step I took hinges on the fact that if when you have a sum when you have a limit of a of a sum or difference or a combination of sums and differences, 
if each of those if each of those constituent limits is defined then you can split you can split them up in any way that you want in any way you want them to or you can split them up in any way you want to so here we I've chosen to split up the limits as, I've chosen to make this equal to the the sum of of this the limit of this function here the limit of this function here so this is the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a plus the limit as x approaches a of f of a and we know we know this limit is just is just f of a because again a is a constant right and f applied to a must be a constant as well it's not it's not dependent upon x so the limit as you approach a constant you know oops here like uh let's say this this, sh this line should be vertical here but this is a constant function its value is not going to depend on x and as you approach any any number let's just, let's say this is the the y axis here all right and this is y equals some constant here as you approach any number that that's not going to really affect the limit, right? So this this term is just equal to f of a. And this was just this limit was just taken out of this limit. And again, we can do that because we know each of these limits, each of these three limits exist, so we can split them up in any way we want. So to get from here to here, all I all I did was I'd multiplied and divided this expression by x minus a, and that is allowed because multiplying and dividing by the same thing is equivalent to multiplying by one, which does not change the value of the expression we are considering. And I went ahead and rewrote this limit as a, as x approaches a of f of a, just as f of a. Because that's what it is, as I mentioned earlier. Now here we have the limit of a product, and I rewrite at, rewrite that as the product of these two limits. So the first being f of x minus f of a over x minus a, the second being x minus a, or, or the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a the second being the limit as x approaches a of x minus a now why can I do that that's because both of these limits actually exist and here's where we here's where we um, make use of the assumption the differentiability assumption that we had made earlier anyway we know we know this limit has to exist right because x minus a is just a just the limit of a constant or, or the limit of a linear function and and linear functions have limits basically wherever wherever they're defined right so we know this limit exists this is just x minus some constant a you know say x equals 2 or 3 or whatever or, or a equals 2 or 3, so like x, x minus 2 or x, x minus 3 or whatever. But how do we know this limit exists? Well, this, this was the assumption that we had made. If f of x is differentiable at x equals a, that implies that this limit exists. That is what differentiability means. And I'd really like to drive home that point is that differentiability of f of x at x equals a is really the existence of this limit so in this step we utilized it here is where we made use of the fact that that f of x is differentiable at x equals a if it were not differentiable we would not have been able to split up this limit of this product as the product of these two limits because we would not know that this limit exists. The reason you, the reason you wouldn't know it is, you know, you plug in a for x, you'll get something that you're, you're not sure what it is divided by zero, and you don't know whether that's going to give you an indeterminate form or what. But knowing that the derivative exists, 
tells you that this limit exists because the derivative is this limit. Okay, so this limit here is zero. As x approaches a, the difference x minus a is going to approach zero. This would be equivalent to asking what's the limit as x approaches two of x minus two. Well, the line, the line x minus two, uh, let's say this is the, uh, oops, let's say this is the, the x axis here. As you as you get really really close to as you make x really really oops yeah as you make x really really close to two right this is x equals two the function the the function is going to get really really close to zero so this limit is zero right and this is just a particular case in which a a is equal to two. All right, so this limit zero. So we have a limit here, which happens to be the derivative. This is f prime at a times zero, and then plus f of a. Well, that's equal to f of a, right? So we began with the limit as x approaches a of f of x, and doing a bunch of algebra and making use of the fact that the derivative exists at x equals a. Remember, that's what allowed us to split up this the limit of this product as a product of these two limits. That led us to the fact that this limit is none other than the function evaluated at a. And remember, this is the continuity condition. This is the this is the condition that we wanted to prove. That we wanted to somehow make use of the existence of this limit. Begin with the limit as x approaches a of f of x and show that that's equal to f of a. So we have thus proven that differentiability implies continuity. And we've proven that continuity of a function is, at a particular point is necessary for differentiability at that point.